Mac. In this session, I'll talk about the tools you need to use the Cognitive Weight Control Program. You really only need four tools to manage your weight using Cognitive Weight Control. You need some sort of diary to record your calories for each day and for each meal. You need a way to weigh the food you eat that is weighed rather than measured. You need a good set of measuring cups and measuring spoons, and you need a way to weigh yourself. We've already talked about food diary tools, and I mentioned that I use MyFitnessPal. To measure the food you eat, you will sometimes use volume measurements, such as cups or tablespoons. For those cases, you'll need a good set of measuring cups that include the usual sizes of cup, half cup, quarter cup, and so forth. One that measures an eighth of a cup is also useful, but not necessary. You'll also need a standard set of measuring spoons, such as tablespoon, teaspoon, and so forth. A half tablespoon measure is also useful. At other times, you need to weigh what you're eating. Here are a couple of examples of food scales. There are a lot of choices, but it's worthwhile to invest in an electronic scale rather than the old spring type. I use a Salter Model 2300. I've had it for a long time. I don't even think they make them anymore. But you should be able to get a nice scale for $40 or less. I actually prefer weighing rather than measuring when possible because it's more accurate and it uses fewer dishes. Often, the nutritional panel on a food will list both volume and weight measurements. For example, it may say one cup or 140 grams. I'd advise you to use grams, but either can work. Whatever scale you get, it should have a zero or tear button that lets you reset the weight to zero even if you have a dish or a dish with some food on the scale. This will let you weigh only the food you're adding, not the dish or other ingredients that may already have been added. It should also measure in either ounces or grams and have an easy to read display. Whatever tools you get, do measure or weigh what you eat, no matter how long you've been doing this. It doesn't take long, and it's really important. It's an area where it's really easy to start cheating as time goes by. Five grams means five grams. It doesn't mean a couple of pinches or about yay much. It means five grams. A cup means a level cup. It doesn't mean about two thirds of a glass full or enough to make the correct consistency for whatever you're making. The whole reason for counting calories is to get objective consistency. You just can't do that without weighing and measuring. You really can't. You may have put a half cup of blueberries into a dish to defrost them a hundred times and feel that you know how full a dish will be with a half a cup in it without measuring. Believe me, you don't. Do that for a few months and I'll practically guarantee you that that half cup will be closer to two-thirds or three-quarters of a cup. Of course, the other thing you need to weigh is you. You may also want to periodically take some key measurements such as your waist, hips, chest, leg, arms, and so forth. I've never done that, but I can see the value in it. I kind of just let my clothes tell me what my measurements are. But as I said, for some people, it's a good idea. Many diet plans and doctors will tell you to only weigh yourself once a week. That's because it can be discouraging to weigh yourself every day since your daily weight is definitely a sawtooth. It goes up and down, even if the overall trend is down. There are a lot of reasons for that. You may have retained water or your bowels may not have evacuated recently. It may even be that you exercised especially hard, which in my experience is just as likely to show weight gain in the short term as it is weight loss. I have a few problems with only weighing yourself weekly. The first is that I don't know anyone trying to lose weight who has actually been able to do that. Sticking to a new way of controlling what you eat is really hard, especially at first, and you want to know how you're doing. Second, you can still get discouraging results if you happen to be at a low point in the sawtooth one week and a high point the next week. It can look like you followed your diet plan for a whole week and gained weight. That's really discouraging. 
Third, you really need constant feedback. But it is absolutely true that your weight graph will look like a saw blade. It will go up after days when you did really well and down on days when you maybe goofed up a little bit. Sometimes it even goes up the second day after you eat too much. On occasion, it just seems a little random. Nevertheless, I really like to weigh myself every day and keep a graph. Record your weight every day, but only evaluate your progress once a week by looking at what's happened for the past two weeks. If you go two weeks without losing at least a pound, that's usually a problem you need to address by increasing your exercise or reducing your daily calorie allotment. Also, if you lose weight too fast, it's likely to include too much muscle and other tissue. So if I'm losing more than five pounds a month, I increase my calorie allotment. You are looking at an example of part of my weight graph. Taken as a whole, it shows that I was achieving my expected weight loss. But imagine cutting the graph off at certain points where it went up without knowing what came afterwards. It's really easy to get discouraged. That's why you should just evaluate your progress once a week. I'd also recommend that each time before you step on the scale, you repeat the following to yourself. My weight graph is a sawtooth. If you don't keep that in mind, it's likely you'll get discouraged when your weight goes up a pound or two, even though you're doing everything right. Just remember, evaluate weekly, not daily. There are a couple of other things to be aware of. The first, and you probably already know this, is that you will lose many more pounds the first week than at any other time. Sometimes the second week is good too, although rarely as good as the first week. Don't expect this to continue. You didn't gain your weight overnight and you're not going to lose it overnight either. For me, losing about a pound a week over the long haul is great. But as I've said before, talk to your doctor. It's also possible that you may occasionally get stuck on a plateau. That usually happens only after you've been on the program for some time, but we'll talk about that in a later session. Obviously, in order to weigh yourself, you need a good scale. I strongly recommend an electronic scale. You can certainly key your weight in your diary each day, but if you're adventurous, you might like to explore a scale with a way to send your weight directly to your cell phone. I use the Weight Gurus scale sold by Greater Goods but there are many good scales on the market. This scale displays your weight on a small monitor and automatically sends it to an app on your cell phone, which then adds it to a graph showing daily, weekly, monthly, and even overall results. Having a graph like that makes it very easy to evaluate your progress at the end of the week. The scale also evaluates body fat, muscle mass, water weight, and body mass index, or BMI. These data are derived from passing a tiny current through your bare feet. I've been told that doesn't work well if you have artificial knees, which I do, so I tend to ignore it. I'm not sure how accurate it is anyway, but the weight and the BMI are accurate, and that's what I care most about. For consistency, weigh yourself every morning, right after you go to the bathroom, while you're still in your jammies or whatever you sleep in. Your weight may vary as much as several pounds during the day. So it's important to keep the conditions under which you weigh yourself as consistent as possible. It's even important that you stand on the scale in the same place each time. Look at your toes and make sure they're in the same place on the scale each time you weigh. So that's what I think you need to know about weighing and measuring. Now here's your limerick for this session. After countless trips to the mall, Tom found nothing that fit him at all. So he swallowed his pride and ducked quickly inside of a store that was marked big and tall. In the next session, we'll talk about the dreaded E word, exercise. It's a lot better than you think. See you then.